Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at creating a difficulty setting, and depending on the difficulty, we'll decide if there's an extra item to find, you need a key, things like that. So for a difficulty setting, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new scene. So if you haven't already, save your work, go to File, Save Scene, and name it. If you've already named it, then saving it will just save your updates. So a scene is basically uh, the closest thing to, to compare it to would be a level. So in a side-scrolling game, a scene would be a level. A scene could also be uh, any area that uh, loads and is discrete. And that is like, say, if you think of like the old survival horror games, you go through a door, it loads, you're now in a room or a hallway, you go through another door and it loads. So that loaded area would be a scene. And that's just a couple examples. So a menu can be a scene, and that's what we're going to do here. So go to File, New Scene, and what we're going to do is we're going to create some text objects. So they're going to be clickable. So we go to Game Object, Create Empty, and we'll call this Easy. And Easy is going to have Add, and it's going to have Mesh, and it's going to have a text mesh. Now, there is a more modern way, a more updated way of creating a user interface using the built-in UI. I'm not going to do that in this one since we're trying to keep it simple. But yes, instead of creating text meshes, there is a separate way in which you can create a user a UI. Maybe I'll do a separate video about the UI in general. But for now, this is what we're going to do. So text mesh, uh, for the text field, we're going to type in the word easy. As you can see, it's big and it's blurry, so we need to reduce the character size. We bring that to 0.15. Uh, for font, let's make that like 24. And we need to choose a font. We'll choose Arial. And we'll just slide this over. It needs a collider box, so Physics 2D, Box Collider and it needs to be set as a trigger. So let's take that, copy it, paste, and we'll rename it. Medium. Uh, the only change we really have to, have to make here is we make the text that it displays, the word medium, and slide it over. Copy again, paste it. Call this one hard. Slide it over, change the text to the word hard, and we'll copy one more time and paste it, and we'll call this one, say, expert. The naming is really kind of arbitrary. Some don't even have a quote-unquote easy. They have like a normal. Uh, so the naming really doesn't necessarily mean all that much. You're just trying to uh, communicate to the player just to set expectations as far as what the difficulty is going to be. Okay, and that is definitely not centered. So let's just select them all and move them all over. That's a little bit better. So we'll create a, another text which will not be clickable. And this one will just say difficulty. Again, change the character size to 0.15, but we'll make this font bigger. Slide that over. Now, a lot of games you'll probably have like a menu that says options. You click on options, and then one will be. Um, you know, there'll be a difficulty and then you click into that and that brings up the submenu. Again, we're trying to do a simple game, so there's really no reason to add that level of complexity to navigating the menus, particularly since the original request was this to be a game for kids. And what we're going to do is, for now we won't even have a start button. What's gonna happen is you're gonna click on the text and it will automatically start the game by clicking on the text. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this scene. 
So save scene, and we'll call this menu. And you can see that it's down here. So now you can go between these if you needed to come here and make uh, some changes. And then you can come back here. So we need a script attached to these to uh, function. So basically determine how these function, I should say. So right click, create, and we'll do C sharp script, and we'll call this Let's call this text con for text control. We'll click on all four of these and we'll drag and drop that script right onto them. So now anything that we make a change, any changes we make to that script will be made to all four objects. So let's go ahead and open that up. So we're going to go to move maze. And since this is, we've really been using this kind of like a GM object because we're defining our static variables here. So we're going to just keep doing that. So in move maze, we're going to do public static string game. DIF, short for game difficulty. And we'll actually we'll set this to none rather than have it be null. We'll actually use the word none. We'll save that. Now in text control, what we're gonna do is when you click on the name of that script, what's gonna happen. Excuse me, when you click on the name of that object, that name is going to be transferred into that variable that we just created. So, void on mouse down and Whenever I do any kind of click functionality, when I ever do collisions, I always like to test it just to make sure it works before I add any other functionality to it. So we're going to do, um, so debug dot log. I'm going to do click. And that way, down here, it'll, it'll, um, it will display the word click. And the script is attached to the object, so this should work. So if I click on this, there we go, it worked. Just test the other ones. Technically, I could do it all at once because you click on them, and then when you expand the debug log, it would show you all of them. So I really didn't have to restart it the second time. Okay, so we know the clicks are working, so we can get rid of that. Or you can remark it out either way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that name and use that to make a decision based on... Um, so, so basically we're going to take the name of the object that you're, you're clicking on, easy, medium, hard, or expert, and drop that into the variable that we just created and then decisions will be made um, in the main part of the game. So, if the mouse is if the mouse is clicked down on the object, then we want move maze dot game dif to be set equal to game object dot name. So this by itself is saying whatever the name of the object the script is attached to, that's what this is equal to.
So we're saying this variable is being set to the name of the object the script is attached to. We'll save that. And I suppose we could actually do the debug one more time. So I could have left that in here instead of deleting it, but no big deal. And we just put that variable in here. And now what's going to happen is in the debug log, you will see the name of the objects appear. See, now it actually transfers that information. So now you're capturing the actual name of what you're clicking on, and now you can just make a decision based on that. So this level, um, this scene, I should say, we want this to go away when you click, and then we want the main level to appear. So to go between scenes, you have to go up to File, you go to Build Settings, and now you just need to add the scenes here. So you can just put Menu at top, and then Maze under it. And then we close that. And what we have to do is we're going to use something known as Scene Manager. So for Scene Manager to work, you have to put in an extra line up here. So using Unity Engine dot Scene Management. And what we do is we say, OK, go ahead and load the scene. In this case, it's always the same scene. So load, so it's scene manager dot load scene, and just the name of the scene. It is, I think, level one, uh, maze one, rather. So maze one. So we'll test that functionality. It probably seems repetitive, but trust me, when you start doing mouse clicking and collisions, you really want to make sure you know exactly uh, that it's working every step of the way. Because if you pile on a bunch of code in here and it doesn't work, peeling back the layers takes time, so it's easier to test it on your way in. So this should work. Yep, excellent. So now you've seen how to load a scene, load a level. So we're almost there. So this really does everything that we want it to do. Now what we want is we now want the scene itself to make changes based on um, the value that's been clicked on. So we'll save this current scene as it is, go back to maze one. Now we have scripts attached to items. Actually, I think we're just gonna attach one more script. A very easy way to do this is if you have a script attached to these, okay, based on the value that's been clicked on in the previous scene, you can simply do a self-destruct. So let me show you how that would work. So just for simplicity, I'm going to create another script and just attach it to everything relevant. So, um, uh, level... Call this level destruct, even though that's not really a great name for it. We're not destroying the, the the level so much as we're destroying the object based on the level. So what we want to do is we want level destruct to be attached to the key. That's this key here. We want to be attached attached to this cat. Uh, this cat. We want it to be attached to the two cursors. And we also want it to be attached to the objects themselves. So uh, there's the key. There's the exit no actually not exit the door the exit is actually up here if we click on exit it's invisible it's just a collider so we don't want to attach the exit the exit you always want or else it won't uh, you can't escape but we want it attached to the door
Oops, sorry, I already added it there. Let's remove that. And we want to attach it to the cat. So that would be this cat that's right in the maze. Now, what you do is in that new script, you simply check that variable that we just created and say, based on that variable, we want certain things to be destroyed. So we want to do it in the start section before the game, before this level actually starts running. So, and we have to check two things because this is attached to uh, the objects. So we're checking both the name of the object and the name of the, uh, or the value for that variable. So if So if move maze dot game diff equals oops yep equals equals easy then we want basically everything to be destroyed. And we can either check by object name or by tags. Tags can be a little bit messy because some of these objects you want to show under multiple conditions. And I believe you can only attach one tag. So what we're going to do is we will check the object name. So if game diff is equal to easy, then um, destroy. game object. In other words, all the objects that the script are attached to, because that's what destroy game object does, it destroys the object the script is attached to. So if you've chosen easy, then anything this script is attached to should be destroyed. Because that's what we said originally, there should be no key, there should be no cat, there should be no door. So let's actually just give that a quick run. Oops, we don't want to run it like that. We actually want to, so we want to save and go to menu, run it, easy. And sure enough, no cat, uh, no key. Well, I'm presuming it's not there because th these are missing too, the uh, inventory slots, but let's double check. So no key, no cat. And then we should just be able to walk right to the door. And it's invisible, but the exit is over here. And you'll see it appear down here. See? So, easy difficulties work, and it destroyed all those. We'll copy this, but we have to make some substantial changes. Equals medium. Now, this one's going to be a little bit more complex because we're going to check for a couple conditions. So I'm going to paste this in and walk us through it. So, double ampersand when you want to check multiple values. So, this was the first value we're checking. Now, we're checking another. So, you need another parenthesis. Game object dot name equals cat. So, we're saying, is this attached to the cat object? Let's just expand that. Or, now if you notice here, I didn't do a separate parenthesis, and that's because I'm checking exactly the same variable. So if you are checking exactly the same variable, then you don't need to add the, uh, the extra parentheses. Game object dot name equals cursor2. I did a splice a few minutes ago, and I renamed this cursor2. And that's it. It needs to uh, destroy game objects. So... That's probably the most complex uh, if statement we've done yet, because what you're saying is this is mandatory, but either or of these can be true. So effectively, what that says is if this is attached to cat, cat gets destroyed. If this is attached to cursor 2, cursor 2 gets destroyed if this is set to medium. So let's go ahead and save this. 
we save the scene. We go to the menu. Choose medium. As you can see, the second inventory slot is missing. The key is not missing, and the cat is missing. So there you go. Um, so we just have to do um, if, well, if you choose hard or expert, nothing would happen. So right now, this actually would work okay that for hard mode, you don't want anything to be destroyed. You want it to be the default that we're working with. And um, that's really it. Uh, the expert mode, I was going to do it, but I think this video is kind of stretched on, and I think I will do one more video for the expert mode, which will have uh, a timer, and then maybe you can find time pieces that increase the timer. So that should about do it then.